Hi there, once again, it's Jennifer and I'm so glad you're here. So today I'm sharing techniques for using 3D embossing folders. Now these techniques work with regular embossing folders too, and I'll share with you the best way to get smooth ink transfer in an embossing folder. This creates kind of a letterpress look that's really fun to do. Now I have done many embossing folder techniques in uh, videos in the past, and I'll link to a couple of those at the end of this video, but today's is super easy and can be used with inks you have on hand. Let's first look at the embossing folders that I'll be using today. These are new from Simon Says Stamp. They've never done embossing folders before, and I'm really excited that they've started. Embossing folders are a lower price point than many uh, products that we use in crafting, so it's another one of the reasons that I like to use them in videos. Now these are 3D embossing folders. That means it's not just raised and lowered areas, but some in between. So it really gives a great smooth three-dimensional look. Now you can see these are very thick. They're thicker than traditional embossing folders. And I found that even 3D embossing folders, depending on the company, have different thicknesses. So I will show you the sandwiches that I use for these in particular today. But keep in mind, the uh, sandwich that you need will vary from company to company, so always check with the manufacturer. But usually it's pretty easy to figure out. And this is the last of the Simon Says Stamp embossing folders I'll be using today, and it happens to be my favorite. I love those daisies. Now before we get into the technique of inking these, I wanted to give you an idea of the impression that you can get and the sandwiches you can use. Let's first look at using one of these 3D embossing folders with the Platinum 6, which is one of my favorite machines. It's from Spellbinders. Now for this, I found that if I used a metal shim, a folded piece of heavyweight cardstock, I used 110 pound cardstock, and then the embossing folder, that's all you needed. So there's my metal shim, folded piece of cardstock underneath it, and then I put the embossing folder on top. No cutting plate needed. And I found this gave beautiful results. Now take a close look at this. You can see the 3D look of it. That's what's special about a 3D embossing folder. It's not just raised, it's got those smooth edges that makes it look more realistic. Now I also tried this with the Gemini and what I found worked with the Gemini Junior is to do one clear cutting plate, then a metal shim. Then you just put the embossing folder on top and run it through, no other plate needed. However, I ended up later switching and putting a folded piece of heavyweight cardstock in there also, and I found that gave better results. So it's pretty much the same kind of sandwich for both kinda, um, but I will provide the information from Simon Says Stamp below in case you do try these particular embossing folders. Okay, so let's now move on to the technique, and yes, you can do this with any embossing folders you have. Now this I found the best way to do ink transfer in an embossing folder to get a faux letter press look. I decided to use Tim Holtz Distress Oxide inks today, but you could use um, any kind of dye ink, you could use any kind of pigment ink, but man, these oxide inks work great for this. So give a try with whatever inks you have, but if you've got oxide, go for that. So I put some Salty Ocean and some Peacock Feathers directly onto my glass work surface. That's a media mat from Tim Holtz. And I'm using a brayer to go back and forth to blend those two colors together and to pick up the color to transfer into my embossing folder. I'm putting it onto the side of the embossing folder where the background is raised. So you can see how the ink ends up on the raised background. And I just go back and forth between the two a couple times. I then can put in any cardstock I want. I chose to use um, Brutus Monroe's Not Your Mama's cardstock because it's super heavyweight and I love it. And look at those results, so beautiful. And the best part is that ink that you have on your desk, you can use again on another. But check out how those white trees look raised against the blue sky background. It's just beautiful. And I found this is really the best way to get smooth ink transfer. So here I am doing another, just transferring some more of that ink over. And you can do uh, about three or four, depending on what type of folder, three or four transfers of ink using that first bit of ink that you put onto your desk. So there you go, look at that. There's another one for you. So you can quickly make a lot of backgrounds at once. Here's one last one with that forest embossing folder. This has Salty Ocean, Seedless Preserves, and Picked Raspberry on my Brer. 
and I just put in my cardstock and run it through as I showed you earlier and you get a beautiful ink transfer. Now the Brer I have is the same one that I use on my gel press and it can be used for many other things in the craft room and I'll do some other videos. Doesn't matter what width you have, any works. This is the four inch width and it works really well with the embossing folders. This time I have seedless preserves, salty ocean, and peacock feathers on my desk. And you can see how I kind of go back and forth a little bit to get it to blend on my brer. I then take this over to our floral embossing folder. This time I again am applying it to the side where the raised part is the background. So you can see the background pattern shows up here. I then will put in my cardstock, run it through my die cut machine, and I have a beautiful transfer. I love the look of this embossing folder. It's such a beautiful one. Here's another great folder. This is a leaves embossing folder. I'm putting Lucky Clover and Mowed Lawn Distress Oxide Ink onto my glass media mat. If you don't have a media mat, any kind of clear, like um, plastic or glass surface would work for this. I put all the ink I can onto my brayer and then I just roll it into my embossing folder. Now with the leaves one, especially, you could do either side of the embossing folder. I once again am going with the side that has the background raised. So you can see all the color you get in there. Now if I would have tried this with taking the ink pad directly to that, I probably wouldn't have gotten as good of a transfer of ink. So that's why the Brer really comes in handy. Now while that runs through my Gemini, I still have this ink on my Brer and on my desk, so I thought I'd go ahead and ink up my floral uh, embossing folder too. So you can really crank out quite a few of these at once. So I'll put the cardstock in there, run that through the machine, and now let's look at the leaves background. I just love how beautiful that is, and a nice blend from one color to the next. And I did all of these on white so you could see the dimension and how well the ink transfers, but you definitely could do this on colored cardstock for less contrast. Okay, this time I have seedless preserves, picked raspberry, and this is abandoned coral. I love this combination here. I think it's just beautiful. And this is a true test right here. I'm using an embossing folder where there is a lot of white space on the embossing folder, and you'll see you get a nice ink transfer. So uh, this is the peony bundle, that beautiful floral. I decided to apply it to the side where, again, the background of the image is raised. So you can see lots of ink is going on there. Now, if I tried to do this one by going direct to the embossing folder with an ink pad, I would have gotten marks and it wouldn't have been as smooth. So this is where a brayer really comes in handy. I finally got my brayer out of my stash when I started using the gel press and it is really a handy tool to have. So I run that through and check that out. I love that and I like how the pink gets into some of the nooks and the crannies of the flower to make the dimension of it stand out more. Remember you could always use softer color inks or more bold color inks if you wanted. Here I'm using that leftover ink in the flower embossing folder and I'm using a light pink cardstock just to show you it's fun to do color on color. I just think that's beautiful. Next I wanted to show that you could ink either side of the embossing folder in some cases. So with the leaves one, this time I've used peeled paint, mowed lawn, and lucky clover inks. And I'll start by applying the ink to the raised leaves. So this is opposite of what I did before. Last time I did it to the raised background. This time I'm doing it on the side with the raised leaves. I apply the ink the same way with the brayer. I use the same kind of cardstock or you can do colored. This is a heavyweight green cardstock. And there you can see that the ink went into the impression of the leaves. So it gives a little bit of a different look. And let me show you comparison. This time I'm using the same ink, same cardstock, but we'll ink up the other side of the embossing folder. I was lazy and didn't clean the other side, it doesn't matter. It'll just go on the back of the cardstock. But here I am, this time putting on the side of the embossing folder where the background is raised. And by the way, you may notice there's tape on the top of this embossing folder. That is because I intentionally cut it apart because I was trying something out. Just for me, I love to try out techniques and all that, decided it wasn't worth it. So don't cut your embossing folder like I did. Okay, anyways, here you go. You can see the ink is pressed into the background in this case. So this is opposite of the last one. So I was able to use this embossing folder for both ways. Here I did it on a light green cardstock just so it would show up more so you could see what it's like there with the ink pressed into the leaves and then also with the ink pressed into the background. 
Now, I find that on some embossing folders, both sides don't give as great results. There's usually one side that gives the best, but I encourage you to try inking both sides to see which you like the best. Off screen, I did a bunch of backgrounds with the Lumen embossing folder. And if you look closely at these, on one, I inked one side in the embossing folder. On the other, I inked the other side, and it gives two completely different looks, both with that raised dimension that is really fun. So always try both sides of the embossing folder. Usually one will look better, but in this case, they both look great. Okay, so now that we've created a bunch of backgrounds, I will go ahead and turn these into cards. I have some ideas for you along the way that may be helpful too. So let's start with the forest backgrounds that we created. I made two cards with these, and I have a lot of backgrounds left over. For the purple one, I trimmed it down and added it to a white note card. Then I used the new Simon Says Stamp Chunky Joy die set. So this cuts the shadow. Also the outline of the letters joy and the inside pieces of the letters joy. So I die cut the shadow from white cardstock and then the outline of the word joy from white cardstock and then on top of that I put holographic cardstock. I'm really liking holographic cardstock right now simply because it adds shine and it picks up whatever color is around it. So here it'll go nicely with that pink and purple background. So I glued the joy onto the card, and I also added a simple sentiment strip right over it, stamped in an ink that matches the background, which is the Tim Holtz Distress Oxide and Seedless Preserves. I also added a few purple gemstones. In most of these cards, I tried to keep the design simple so the background would really show. In this case, you can see the dimension of those white trees. I think this one would be fun to mass produce for the holidays, and you could do a bunch of different color backgrounds just to change things up. For that sentiment across the word joy, I used the Simon Says Stamp Tiny Words Christmas Stamp Set. This is from last year, and you can see I use it quite often. Okay, let's go on to our other example using one of those forest embossed backgrounds. This time I used the new Simon Says Stamp Peace Die Set. I'm excited about this one and I'll actually use it for the holiday cards I make for my mom to send out if I ever find the time. It's great because you can put different sentiments underneath it that go with peace. So here's the card I created. It was very simple. I put my background onto a white note card. For the word peace, I die cut the shadow die from white cardstock. Then I die cut the word peace twice from white cardstock and once from a white glitter cardstock and glued those all together. And look at that gorgeous stacked look. I love the look of that white glitter paper on the white background. It's so pretty in real life. The white glitter uh, paper that I use is from Memory Box, and I'll link it below. And I also added a few Trinity Stamps bubble gems in the background. So you can see how that white glitter paper is really cool on that background. Okay, let's move on to another background. This is one of the many daisy backgrounds that I made. This I decided to keep very simple also. I used the Simon Says Stamp Gina K collaborative set called Summer Roses. Great set, but what I like best is that you can get the dies for this that cut out the word enjoy and the word hello. And they're just a fun design that's great because it has enough interest to it that it is the focal point of the card. I white heat embossed the hello on blue cardstock and used the die to cut it out. Then I took three scraps of cardstock strips that matched my background, and on the back I'm taping them together. On one of these strips, I have white heat embossed the word friend from the same stamp set. So this will say hello friend on the front. So I'm just putting tape on the back of these to hold them together. Then I can put glue on that and glue it onto our card. So I did trim my background down a little bit and added it to a four and a quarter by five and a half inch white note card. And now I'm gluing those strips together onto the card. It's easier to do those together and get them in the right spot than it is to do each individually. And I thought this was funny as I was putting the glue on that piece of cardstock scrap was stuck to it and was dancing along there. I tell you, everything is a mess on my desk right now. Anyways, I put glue on the back of our Hello die cut and added that right on top. So. People ask if my desk is messy. It's messy when I'm creating, but before I start a new video, I clean it up. I just have to. Anyways, so I added a few purple gems there. You can see this it, adhesive is still wet there. Um, when it dries, it'll be clear. And how I pulled out the colors in the background in the cardstock strips that I added below the sentiment. Very simple design. You could do this in lots of different colors, and it would make a great card set to give as a gift. 
Okay, my next example is completely different, but I wanted to show you that this technique works great for backgrounds with anything as a focal point. So this is the new Simon Says Stamp Rest Queens stamp set. I really like the images on this and especially the sentiment that says you deserve a nap because I'm just going to stamp that on everything. Anyways, I just decided to stamp some of the images and color them quickly with Copic markers. I didn't do anything fancy at all. Matted that colored image on pink cardstock and added it to one of our embossed backgrounds. The Tomorrow's a New Day is white heat emboss on a black cardstock strip. I also added some tonic aqua shimmer pen to her cheeks and to the stars for a little bit of shine. But you can see how that texture in the background kind of steps up this pretty simple card design. Okay, I wanted to show you a few other completed cards before I show you a bonus card at the end of this. Now for this one, I used that peony bundle embossing folder and you can see the beautiful ink transfer that we got. At the top there, I used the thanks or the big thanks Simon Says Stamp die set. This is an older one that I use a lot. I die cut the shadow from white, the word thanks from holographic cardstock. And underneath it, I stamped a tiny little message from the original Simon Says Stamp tiny word set, which is one of my all time most used sets. There you can see how the holographic cardstock picks up those pinks in the background and the beautiful dimension. I wish you could see on camera the dimension 3D embossing folders give. It's just gorgeous. And again, these embossing folders have a great price point. But if you don't have 3D embossing folders, use traditional embossing folders with this technique. It'll be beautiful also. Okay, here is one of our leaf backgrounds. I just kept this one very simple also. I really like those colors in the background that I used for this transfer. It was Mode Lawn and Lucky Clover. I think those go well together. Now for this, I have that Hello from Simon Says Stamp and Gina K. Then I also have the Simon Says Stamp Etched Laurel Leaves Dies, which you've seen me use in many videos. And that's tucked behind the Hello die cut. The I Miss Your Hugs is from a hug stamp set, which you'll see me use at the end of this video. So for this card, I used the Fall Foliage Embossing Folder. And I did for this one too, and it's a completely different look. So for this one, I wanted kind of a masculine look. I had a card I needed to make for a certain friend and I thought he would like this. Now I used a maple leaf die from Simon Says Stamp. That's that white die cut that you see. And then I also used the Simon Says Stamp Bold Thanks die for the thanks message. And I die cut that from a darker green cardstock and put glossy accents on top. Behind that, I have a gold cardstock strip and a little scrap of dot pattern paper that I found tucked in one of my drawers. So I plan to make more like that using the other background that used the other side in the embossing folder. And then I also had these where I did the two different sides of the embossing folder, but with light green cardstock. So you can really make a bunch of these at once. Before we go, I have a bonus card for you. This simply uses some pieces I had left over from the technique that I was doing today, and I'll talk about those along the way. The other thing fun about this card is it opens up. It's like these arms wrap around the card, giving it a hug, and I thought that was really fun and great kind of card to send out these days. I used the Simon Says Stamp Giant Hugs Card Wrap Dies. These are brilliant. They've been out for a bit now, but I haven't had a chance to use them. They've been sitting on my desk, and I thought it was finally time that I put them to use. So they have this cut line along the edge so that you can line up with the edge of your card to wrap around the front. But I decided to do it a little bit differently. I cut it from some cardstock, and then I cut a second set. You don't have to do two sets, but I thought it'd be nice to have thicker arms that wrap around the cards. On one set of arms, I keep those little flaps on the side. On the other extra set of arms, I cut those flaps off. I'll just glue these behind the ones with the flaps so they're a little bit stronger. By the way, I also have a piece of white cardstock there that I use the lumen embossing folder on. So you can see there's a little texture there. It was left over, so I decided to use it. Okay, so on one of my arms with the flap on it, I put adhesive on the back, and I put one of my arms where I cut the flap off. Again, I'm just making a little bit thicker. This cardstock was a little thinner, so I thought it would be good to do. And I did that with the other arm too. So the one with the flap, I put adhesive on the back of, and then I put the arm without the flap behind that. So now we have these two arms that will nicely wrap around our card. 
Now the dies make a score line at the end of the arm right before the flaps so I fold and reinforce that score line and I also like to cut the edge of the flaps at an angle just so I can be sure they don't peek out and show on the front of the card. Then I'll do the same to the other arm. Okay now for our card itself. I have a four by five and a quarter inch white note card here and on it I'm gluing a white piece of cardstock that's the same size and I had run that through the embossing folder, the Lumen embossing folder. So it has that bit of texture. No ink in the embossing folder, just the white cardstock. Now I'm putting adhesive on our flaps and I'll tuck that around our note card. And I'll do the same on the other side. So push it right up against the edge there. And then you can glue all of this onto a four and a quarter by five and a half inch piece of peach cardstock, just to give it a nice finished look on the back. Now for the heart inside of this, I actually used a scrap from all the crafting I did today. Whenever I needed to clean my brayer after doing the technique, I would just do it on a piece of white scrap paper. And I kept that paper because it had beautiful ink on it. And I used one of those pieces and die cut it with a heart and then used the Lumen embossing folder. And that's what I have here. So that was just leftover ink on scrap paper. And I'm gluing that behind our arms and then we'll just add a sentiment. For the sentiment, I use the Simon Says Stamp Paper Hugs stamp set, which is a favorite of mine for 2020. I used the I Miss You on the front of the card and I Can't Wait to Hug You on the inside. So here is the completed card. I did add a few extra little die cut hearts here and there. And you can see how the wrapped arms open up. Then you can open up the card for a personal message. I just think that's such a fun and clever design and very easy to make. So I did use some ink scraps there in those embossing folders. So don't let that extra ink go to waste. You can use it for other things too. One last thing, look at all of these embossed backgrounds that I have with lots of texture and color. These are all left over from what I created today. and so fast and easy to do. If you're looking for a little creative therapy to help you get through a day, try this. Doing something this simple and be able to create this much really makes you feel good. Okay, if you're interested in the supplies I use, they're always linked below in my YouTube description. I'll share a couple other embossing folder videos here at the end. You can also go to my blog where there is a lot more information, including a way to get a free gift over at Simon Says Stamp. And you can always subscribe if you're interested in seeing more. Thank you for spending this time with me. Have a wonderful, wonderful weekend, and we'll see you soon.